Hello and welcome to this Low Code in 30. My name is Simon Black and I'm a technology evangelist here at Mendix. And in today's webinar, we're going to cover building mobile experiences. So these webinars run on a monthly basis. And in each monthly webinar, we try to cover off a particular topic around low code development. In May, we looked at how you can collaboratively visually develop applications using things such as the web modeler to rapidly build applications without code. In June, we took a look at how we can build beautiful multi-channel applications and leveraging things like the Atlas UI, building blocks, and also the Mendix web modeler to rapidly build those applications. In today's webinar, we'll focus on building mobile experiences. So we take a look at how we can build both online and offline experiences, but also extend that application out to other devices such as wearables and chatbot interfaces. In August, we'll take a look at how you can build smart applications. A smart application is an app that leverages IoT services, blockchain services, and also cognitive services to be able to create a unique experience, which is leveraging existing data and building new types of applications. And finally, in September, we'll look at how you can take your Mendex applications and deploy those to any architecture you need, whether it be on any cloud of your choice or on-premise environment. And the structure of these webinars is that we'll, in five minutes, cover a presentation. In 25 minutes, we'll look at a demo of the Mendix platform. And finally, we'll have a live Q&A where you can ask us questions about the technology. So to give you some insight as to what Mendix is about, Mendix is a company that is born to help enterprises win with apps. And Mendix is the fastest and easiest low-code platform to enable you to create and continuously improve mobile and web applications. And we do that by using visual models. So rather than coding an application, we allow you to build the, the pages, the data, and also the logic using visual models and deploy those applications to wherever you need. The whole platform is designed to bring both business and IT together allowing them to collaborate throughout the whole application lifecycle. Everything from gathering requirements, developing your application, and finally deploying your application is available within the Mendix platform, allowing you to create applications 10 times faster and using 70% less resources. So if we take a look at user interfaces and also mobile devices, there's an ever expanding amount of devices out there. We're starting to see an emergence of chatbot interfaces, but also wearable devices that our customers are expecting us to provide our applications out to. So we have new ways of interacting with these devices. So rather than whether it be through speech, whether it be through a chatbot, we need to be able to cater for these different types of devices. And this is becoming a challenge and Gartner sees that 90% of all large organizations are not leveraging their mobile strategy. And there's one good reason, and that's because they're siloing their investment in mobile development. They're taking each of these particular mobile applications or mobile devices they need to cater for, developing them in different technology, and not having a single strategy to cover each of those devices. So to help with this, low-code platforms bridge the gap and allow you to build those applications for multiple different types of mobile devices and allows you to build your applications for all of those devices, but build them in one core platform. So rather than building them in different technologies, different languages, such as your iOS or Android development, you can build in one application platform and deploy those out to multiple devices. A low-code platform also needs to be able to be offline and online. You need to be able to have the same experience for your users across your application, whether they have signal or whether they don't have signal. So they need to be able to have that experience going forward and be able to build those applications easier than developing them in traditional coding languages. Any low-code platform needs to be able to utilize the native device features. So customers expect these high-level interaction with their mobile devices. They expect 
swipe gestures, they expect camera integration and so on, out of the box with any application built with a platform. You also need to be able to deploy these applications much quicker. So once you've built your application, you don't want to be waiting for deployment of your architecture and building your application by your ops team. You need to be able to one-click deploy your application out to any cloud or on-premise environment, but also that application needs to be rolled out to the customer's devices. So with a low-code platform, you're able to do that. You're able to do over-air updates so that your application can be deployed straight to the customer's app and phone as soon as that deployment is done. And finally, any loco platform needs to be able to be extendable. You need to be able to create your services, create REST and SOAP services to leverage that logic and expose it out to other devices, whether they be on chatbot interfaces, whether they be on wearable devices. You need to be able to expose that data as a set of services. So in our demo today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you an example application I'm then going to show you how to make a change to that application. And finally, we'll look at how we can extend the app utilizing a REST service so we can expose it out to other devices we may want to connect up. So the application that we're going to look at today is available on the Mendix App Gallery. And the App Gallery is built by the Evangelist team. And we build a number of applications that are built to inspire. These applications might utilize a number of innovative technologies such as blockchain and, uh, and also IoT services to be able to showcase what is art of the possible with Mendix. So we've built a number of applications across different industries, whether it be from healthcare, whether it be financial services, insurance, and so on. But the application we want to focus in on today is the home care application. This particular application allows remote field workers to be able to go out to a particular customer and be able to ask and answer a number of questions on site. So they need to be able to do this both online and offline. They need to be able to get navigation, for instance, when they're online. And when they're offline in remote regions, they need to be able to answer questions about the particular appointment they're at. So let's take a look at that application and show you what the functionality looks like. So I'm just going to open up my mobile device here, and this is running on my Android device here. I can see with this application a menu bar at the top here, and I can scroll through a number of dates. With this, I can select a particular date and filter the list of appointments. I can also use this search option up here to search for particular appointments within my application. The top here, we have our current appointment. And at the bottom here, we have a list of upcoming appointments. If I slide on these particular upcoming appointments, I can see options to open up a map, text or call, all within the operations of the app. So if I select the map option, it can ask me where I want to actually go. I can select a text option to open up a message dialogue so I can send an SMS message to this particular user. So say for instance, I'm on my way, I might wanna send them a, a message to them. I can use these buttons in these native interactions that are available in the Mendix platform to give that interaction. If I click the view button here, I can go down into the particular appointment. And with this particular appointment, I can see information about where the appointment is. I can also see some task information as well. And I can drill down on that task information to get some more details. Within each task, we have a number of questions which are dynamically configured within our application allowing us to answer certain information using different types of input fields, whether it be a slider, whether it be uh, input fields, for instance, or radio buttons, we can add those into our application and we can make those available as questions in the app. So what we wanna do is I wanna show you how we can make a change to this application, how we can then deploy this application locally and show you the hot reloading, and then finally deploy this application out to a mobile device. So the first thing we wanna do in this application, we wanna add a new feature. We wanna add the ability for each of these questions to have the option to upload a set of photos, be able to see those photos, and finally be able to control the notes field here so that we can actually show or hide that notes field 
based on a particular option. So let's go ahead and look at how we can make those changes to this particular application. So if I close down my mobile preview here, and I can open up the Mendex Business Modeler. This is an install on my local machine, and it allows us to build out our application using visual models. Now we have two versions of our modeling environment. We have a desktop version, which allows uh, more business IT focused people to develop app 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 out applications integrate into certain services, but we also have a web version as well. And the web version is a what you see is what you get online editor in the web, allowing you to build out your application without having to have any uh, IT knowledge. So in the business modeler here on the desktop, we can view our application, we can see the page that we were on earlier. So we have the ability to switch between a view mode and an edit mode to be able to see what the page is gonna look like when we're developing it. So the first thing we want to do is when we're making this change is we want to add some new data for this photo and we want to be able to store that in, in our application. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add some data and we need to create a new data table to be able to store that information. So we do that using the visual domain model and this is where we can build out our application using a drag and drop interface to build out our entities, our tables and also our associations between them. So we have a question here, and for each question, we wanna be able to upload a set of photos. So first of all, I'm gonna add on a new activity. I'm gonna call this photo, and I'm also going to inherit the system image. The system image allows us to automatically upload and store photos within our application. We also have one for file document as well, and it's a quick way to be able to inherit other functionality within your application. Now for this particular application, I wanna have multiple photos for a question. So all I need to do is I need to drag from the entity on the photo to our question, which will automatically create us an association so that we can have multiple photos and against one particular question. The next thing we need to do is now that we've built our particular data, we need to build out the user interface for our application. And the way we do that is we use the visual page builder to build out that application. So when we're building out our application, we can build for different device profiles. So within the Mendix platform, we have the ability to have additional profiles and additional pages per different device. So if we add a navigation profile in here, we can see we have the ability to create online and offline pages, we're able to create browser and tablet and mobile pages so that you can specifically design your application the way you need for those individual device types. So for our example, we have a hybrid phone app uh, offline application here, and we can click this show option to take us to the page for this particular first application. Now the page that we wanna change is we wanna change the view topic information. And I've just opened this up in the edit mode here. I can switch between edit and view mode to see what that application is gonna look like. So here we go, we have our notes field and we also have the questions that we, we can answer. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna drag on a new component. And this component is gonna be a building block and the building blocks are available and we covered these in a previous session they enable you to very rapidly build out the user interface and look and feel for your application. So I'm gonna simply add on a navigation block here. And as you can see here, we have uh, the, the camera option, we have a photo gallery, and also an option for our notes field. But at the moment, these particular buttons aren't configured up to do anything. So we need to build that logic and we need to build that interface into the app. So the first thing we wanna do is for this particular button, we have the ability to add a new photo. So I'm gonna select an entity from my domain model on one I've just created earlier. So I've got my photo here, I can select photo. And this enables me to then create the photo for my application. But what I wanna do as well for this particular entity is I wanna be able to set an association. So by selecting, because I'm in a question, it automatically brings up the options to set the association between my question and my photo. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna be able to show a page. I wanna be able to give the user the ability to take that photo, 
be able to store it and be able to view that photo offline. So everything we're doing here is available both online and offline. So we're going to hit new page and this brings up a number of page templates. And page templates are a really quick way to build out your user interface. And these page templates are based on best practice patterns that are developed by either your own organizational UX team or developed by the Mendix apps team as well, the UX team here. So we're going to select a phone sp uh, specific template here. We're also going to select a particular layout and a particular template to help speed up the development. When I click show, this will show the page that we've just created. And as you can see here, we have automatically generated the structure based on that particular entity. So it already knows because it's inheriting the photo uh, system image, uh, we can automatically give the user the ability to upload a photo, be able to select a question, and also be able to see that photo. But I don't want any of this. I want to have just the ability to use the native camera and be able to select and upload a photo. So I'm going to add on a new building block and the building block I'm going to add on is the camera option. So here we have a widget and a widget is an extension of the Mendix platform. So you can extend Mendix on both on the front end with custom JavaScript and build these into widgets and also on the back end as well. So with custom Java. So with the widgets capabilities, you're able to integrate into native device functionality using the Cordova framework to access certain device features such as swipe, such as camera, GPS, and so on, allowing you to very rapidly use those features. So in this camera feature, we want to be able to uh, view the image. We want to be able to save that particular photo and we want to be able to upload that into our application. So I need to connect up the, this save button at the bottom here that I've automatically generated to our photo entity. And what this will do is once we've taken the photo, it will simply save that into the database for us. It will save it into our offline database if we're offline. If we're online, that will automatically synchronize into the online database. So we've created our option now, and this will create us a photo, allow us to up, uh, take a photo and save that into our application. The next thing we want to do is we want to be able to create a view of all of those photos. We want to be able to see a gallery so that we can see those images and view them in our application. So I'm going to create a new page again, and this time it's going to be to show the photos. I'm going to create a form based, use the same template I had before, and this time we're going to just show the photos options here. I'm going to give it a new page title, which is gallery. And within here, we can pass certain objects. In this case, we're going to pass the question because we want to be able to see for each question, all of the photos that have been uploaded. So I'm going to add again, another building block. And this time I'm going to use a pictures building block, which just comes with a list view and an option to show a photo. So I'm going to connect this list view up here and a list view allows you to show a list of objects, a list of data that's stored in your database or in memory. So in this case, we're going to select a particular question and we're going to show all of the photos that are available. I'm also going to connect this particular image up to our photo so that we can show and view that particular image. I don't need a save button at the bottom here, so I'm just going to simply remove that so that we don't need a button at the bottom page. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build some logic into the application. So in this logic, I want to be able to, when I click this button, I want to be able to show and hide that notes field. And we want to be able to uh, view that in our application, both online and offline. Now we have two ways of building logic in Mendix. We have mic flows, which allow you to build your visual logic for online. It will do those on the server side for you. But we also have the concept of nano flows as well. And nano flows allow you to build logic in your application, which is completely run on the client side of your application. So these can run both offline and online. These can be run in the browser. They can be run on the mobile device. And these allow you to build logic and navigation and also uh, decisions all within your client side of your application. 
So in this case, this particular NanoFlow is checking to see whether our appointment is complete. So the appointment is only complete if we've actually completed all of the topics and all of the questions within that particular topic. Once it's complete, we'll then look for the next topic that's available in our offline database or online if we're online, and it will then set the next appointment in the list. So we showed earlier that top appointment is our next appointment that will get executed and run in our application. So let's create a simple nano flow to be able to actually show and hide this notes field here. So I'm going to create call a nano flow. I'm going to create a new nano flow. And I'm going to create some logic to show and hide that particular question. So here we have the, the question. We can then add some, some decisions to it. So the first decision we want to do is we want to check whether the, the notes field uh, is actually shown or hide. So we have a, a Boolean in our database that we've already created. And this allows us to show and hide certain elements on our particular page. So we're going to say, is the notes field shown? And we can do true or false value. So here we're making certain decisions in our application logic. And based on that flow, we can then influence what we do. So if the, the notes field is, is shown, we want to then be able to hide it. So the same button, we click it, we want to be able to show and hide that, uh, that notes field. So to do that, we can use a change object here. And we can choose to select a particular attribute and change the value for that attribute. So if it's set to true, we want to set that particular value to false. And we also want to commit this into the database if we have online connection. If not, we can commit that into the offline database. If, if we don't show the, the fields, we want to be able to actually uh, show them now. So we want to be able to set this one to true. So I'm going to do a change object again on the same value. It's a very simple logic to show you how you can make a decision, how you can change data all within your application, both online and offline. So we've made those changes now and we can actually start to run and view that application. So the last thing we need to do before we move on to running the application is we need to set the visibility of this element. So we want to set this based on an attribute. We want to set the visibility of what the user sees. And with each page of Mendex, you can conditionally show and hide certain attributes based on data, but also based on module roles and user roles in your application. So when we select true, we want to be able to see this notes field. And when we select false, we don't want to be able to see it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the run locally button. And in the background, what Mendix does is it builds us our application. It will build the database for us. It will build the logic layer and also any pages that we need to interact with. Once it's built, we can then view this application on our mobile device, allowing us to scan a particular QR code so that we can test this application both online and offline. So what the application will do is it will ask us to synchronize the app because there's been changes to the database and it will then make all of those updates for us. So it will do all of the creation of the tables, altering any names of attributes and so on, all within our application. So when we hit the down arrow on this view option, we have a few options to view our application. We can either view it in our browser, we can view it on a mobile device, but we also have the ability to view it in the Mendix app. And the Mendix app is an app that we can download from the App Store, and it allows you to test out those applications without deploying and bundling up your application. So rather than having to build those each time for different devices, you can simply use the Mendix mobile app to test out those applications and very rapidly confirm that your application is built correctly. So using the Mendix mobile app, we can go into the side menu here. We can click the scan QR code, this will bring up the QR code for us where we can scan that particular application and we can open up that mobile application on our device. What it first do is it update the application and load everything we need because we've selected the use offline profile, allowing us to use this application both online and offline. 
so here is our application. We can see the appointments overview. We can see the list of appointments. And when we go into the view options here, we can see those information. We can see the tasks. And we can then slide these information. And we have the options that we built earlier. So let's take a photo. Let's open up the camera. And let's take a selfie. And let's hit save on that particular photo so that we can save it into our application. If we go into the gallery now, we can see that particular photo we've uploaded for that question. If we go on to other questions, we won't see those particular photos because we haven't uploaded those. And then finally, we can see this particular notes field. When we press it, it will open and close based on those options. So as I said, we've built this application very quickly. Obviously, you can see I'm online at the moment. But let's take that application offline and put it in airplane mode to show you how this application runs exactly the same on our mobile device. So we've not built different interfaces, we've not built different logic, we use the same logic, same interface to build both online and offline. So let's go ahead and take a photo again. Let's save that. And now we can see we've got these additional photos now. So all offline, we've added that photo. We have the logic as well. We can enter and save these data. We can even complete tasks on the go whilst we're viewing the application. So we can see we've finished this particular application because we've hit complete. It will work out what particular appointment is next and allow us to view that in our application. So now that we've built that functionality, we might want to be able to deploy this out to the mobile app stores. So when deploying applications, uh, especially for iOS and Android, it can often be very cumbersome to build those packages, deploy those out to different devices, get the approval and so on. In Mendix, we try to make it as straightforward as possible. So as mentioned, in the Mendix platform, we have the one-click deployment process. So we can deploy to any cloud or on-premise environment just by hitting the run. And when we hit run, this will take all of the changes we've made to our application, commit those into our central repository, making them available for our developers. So out of the box, Mendix comes with a team server, which is a central repository based on SVN, allowing multiple developers to work on the same projects, create branch lines and so on, and deploy their application. So now that application is deploying to our server, we might want to package out our application and make it deployable to our native device. So to do so, we can go over to the Mendix project space. And this is something we covered in a pro uh, previous webinar. And the Mendix project space allows you to collaborate with people within your project, allow you to develop out your application, but also deploy your application out to many mobile devices as well. So if we go to the mobile app section here, this is where we can start to package out and build our applications for those native devices. So whether it be iOS or Android, we can set certain con configurations in this application and also certain permissions for camera and calendar within this app. We can select certain colors and themes for our application as well as add in certain logos. In this case, we're just gonna build for Android. And to build an application, the Mendix application uses the Cordova framework. So we wrapper up those applications using HTML5 and we use the Cordova framework to allow us to integrate into those native device functionalities. And to build those applications, we've built an online cloud service, allowing you to build your applications in the cloud using phone gap build services. So if we hit publish to mobile app stores, what this will do is it'll ask us whether we want to build this locally ourselves or build in the cloud and which environment we also want to build for. If we hit the start phone gap build job, what this will do is it will take that application for us, build us a necessary Cordova package, transport that to the phone app build service, which will then start to build that in the cloud for us. Now, if we head over to phone app build, we'll see that our new application is starting to be built. This will allow us to then scan a QR code so we can install it on our device and then use that as a, a device application on our own mobile phone. So we can see here that our mobile application for the Android is complete and we've built that new package for the mobile device. 
So if we click on the mobile experiences overview here, we can see and we can download the APK, which is used to install on the mobile Android device. And in the top right corner, we have a QR code. And if we bring up our phone that we had earlier, we can go into a particular scanner and we can scan that QR code so that we can install it on our device. So if we open a QR code scanner, we can scan it here. It will ask us to download a particular application. And here we can see we can download the low code mobile experiences app. We hit download and this will then ask us to open up and install the device. So if we hit install, this will take that application. It will install it on our Android device here so that we can then start to use the native device features and we can then use the features from our sandbox server as well. So the app is now installed and we can open up the application and view that application using the data from our sandbox environment. So very quickly, we've been able to one click deploy into our sandbox environment, be able to package up our applications for the mobile app stores and be able to then install it on an actual device that application and view the data within it. So we can see here we've got our appointments, we can start an appointment, view the, the upcoming appointments, all within the platform. So the final point I want to cover is how we can actually extend the Mendex application with a set of services and use it as a mobile backend as a service. So back into the platform, we can easily create any REST service or SOAP service which we can expose out to a set of uh, interfaces. So whether that be on your mobile wearable device or whether it be on your coded device on iOS or Android, we can expose that out using a set of services. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a published REST service. We can call it appointments, click OK. And within here, we have the ability to start building out the resources and the data that we want to expose as a service. Now in Mendix, we've made that easy. All we need to do is we need to go to the connector. And if we want to drag on and create a service for our appointments, we can simply drag that onto our workbench here. We can select a particular key attribute. And the key attribute allows us to search for certain, um, certain appointments or certain information in our data. And when we select a particular key appointment and we select our operations, we can click OK. And this will automatically generate us all of the necessary REST services, the mappings, the mic flows behind this particular APIs to be able to call those inter interfaces. The next bit is if I click run locally, what this will do is it will now build us a swagger definition for this REST service, meaning that we can take any swagger information we can then build a code generation using Swagger CodeGen, for instance, to be able to integrate into our Mendix application, making it very easy to expose these applications out and utilize them only for the backend or logic. So you have the true flexibility of being able to build those user interfaces on the Mendix platform, but also outside of the platform and use them via services. So if we hit view, and we go to slash rest slash doc. We can see our services that we've published in, in the rest services. And if we click on this, we can see our swagger definition that's been created. We can see each of the services. So our get, our post and delete operations. And we can add easily additional operations in here as well. If we, for instance, click try out and click execute, this would give us an example curl call or an example service response that we can use to integrate into our service. So if we take this curl response, for instance, we can paste this into our favorite Linux service, for instance. In this case, I'm using Ubuntu. And we can then paste that into there so that we can actually see the response we get back. So this is the live data I have from my local server. I can very quickly spin that up and utilize that as data in my other applications. So just to summarize, in the last 30 minutes, what we've shown you is how to take an existing application and make a change to it, how to deploy that application and utilize the services like the Mendix Mobile to be able to test your application out both on the online and also being able to test it offline as well. And we've also shown you how you can make Mendix into a mobile backend service simply by exposing REST services out by drag and drop. So hopefully this has been of interest and hopefully you join us for the next webinar. We'll now hand over to the live Q&A. So at 
this stage of the webinar, we're going to move over to our Q&A portion. Uh, just, just a couple quick notes looking at some of the questions that have come in. Um, if you do have specific uh, product implementation questions, uh, a great resource is going to be our, our Mendix forum, uh, forum.mendix.com. Uh, that'll provide you with a lot of uh, questions that people have already asked, as well as you can post your own and people get back to you uh, very quickly. Um, we'll, keep, we'll keep these questions to um, be a little bit more broad and apply to all of our listeners. Um, something else, one of the questions in there was on, on our recordings and, and the previous showings of this webinar. They are available on the website. If you go to Mendix.com in the top right corner, you click Demos. Um, it'll, it'll show you all of the recordings. We're actually in the middle of a redesign of that to, to make it a little bit more accessible and easier to find the videos you, you want. Um, and that'll be coming out this week, but for now you can go there and, and pretty quickly find what you're looking for. Um, jumping right into it, as we do have a number of questions and, and not um, a whole lot of time left, uh, the first question that I'm seeing here is uh, asking if it's possible to build extensions to utilize native device features. Yes, yeah, so we can build extensions using uh, widgets. Uh, widgets are based on uh, JavaScript. And we can utilize any Cordova library to integrate into the native device functionality. So once you've wrote that particular widget once, you can reuse it across all of your applications. And with widgets, you can pass data from the Mendix application so that you can uh, add that level of data to your integration into the, uh, the service from uh, the phone device. Um, rolling right along. Uh, next question is asking how I can update the colors and design of my applications. Yeah, so every Mendex application comes with a uh, theme package, and the theme package allows you to design what your application is going to look like in terms of your colors, your design, what you'll see on the screen. And you can easily customize that either using our, uh, the SAS that's built into the product, so you can change using variables. Uh, but we also have an online theme customizer as well. So using the theme customizer, you can upload a particular logo, you can change colors and parameters all online, and then you can then apply that design to your application. So we use CSS and HTML5 to present the, uh, the information, so you can easily change those in, in the theme package. Great. Um, the next question I have here is, um, can Mendix applications be distributed using a mobile device management system? Yes, so the same process I showed you earlier where you can uh, deploy and build your application. Once you've built your APK for Android and your IPA for I uh, iOS, you can then wrap those using a mobile device management system, something like a, a mobile iron, for instance, and you can then distribute that out to your enterprise uh, devices so that you can easily create new updates and, and distribute them without going through the App Store process. Got it. The, uh, the next question here, without giving away any uh, roadmap items, uh, is there a Mac uh, app for Mendix? So currently uh, there's a uh, web-based version, uh, which we showed in a, a previous webinar. Um, and in that webinar, you can uh, sh we, we show you how to build an application using the uh, visual models of the web modeler. The same model uh, is exactly the same in the desktop modeler as it is in the web modeler. So you can start off with the web modeler and build your application there and synchronize it with the desktop environment. The desktop environment does work on, uh, on Parallels or on a VM uh, on a Mac, um, so that's probably the best approach at the moment to go down. Um, the next question I have here is, are the UI controls Mendix developed and supported? Are they Mendix developed and supported? So, yes, yeah, so there's a number of key UI components which are core uh, and supported by the Mendix product. Um, so those are uh, things like the list views, the data views that I show to drag on the buttons and so on. They're all supported out of the box of the Mendix platform. We then have the, the Mendix App Store where there's a further set of components which you can download and add into your product. A number of those components are supported at the platform level. So you can uh, download those and use those, and the, the Mendix will make sure that every release, those particular widgets uh, are updated and they work in the latest release. 
And there's also a number of community widgets on the App Store. So these are highlighted very clearly on the App Store as to which ones are platform level and which ones are community level. And you can download those and use those in your project. Um, so we are seeing a lot of questions coming in. Um, I do want to note that uh, if you have any questions, uh, A, please feel free to write them in the Q&A box on, your, on the dashboard. Um, any question that we're not able to get to within this session, and we have uh, just a few minutes left, uh, we will follow up with after the session at some point today um, so that your questions are all answered and, and you can speak with someone um, if you have further questions. Um, going back up to the top of, from the questions that have come in just in the last few minutes, um, it seems Java as a knowledge is very nice to have, though I have been told you do not need uh, any code or design knowledge. Uh, Simon, can you speak just a, a little bit about our sort of developer spectrum? Yep. So with the Mendix platform, we try to support all types of developers within your organization. Uh, everything from someone that's never developed before, they can use the web modeler to be able to quickly build an application and be able to drag and drop and build the application out. We then have the desktop modeler, which we focus more at your business analyst or more traditional developers who want to be able to do things like integration. They want to be able to do code extensions and so on and utilize those in the model. But then the same model can also be opened up in an IDE as well. So using a Java IDE, you can build extensions on the back end they utilize the same application model and uh, the same data using the runtime API. So we really try to span that whole spectrum of types of developers in your organization, from people that have you know, messed around with building access databases and Excel databases through to your traditional developers. And we have all the different products to, to support that. Okay. Um, one down the list. Uh, how does Mendix mobile development compare to progressive web apps? Um, E.g., is it possible to omit app stores and install it as PWA? So currently, PWAs aren't supported with the Mendix platform. Um, I'm not saying that it won't be in the future, but at the moment, we support the uh, deployment via the, the um, a wrapper, so using the Cordova wrapper. So the advantage of doing uh, the deployment via Mendix is that you only need to deploy to the app stores once. Uh, once you've deployed to the app store, you can then obviously utilize those native device features, and any updates will automatically get pushed using uh, over-air updates. So we'll pull those new changes into the application. Um, so you don't necessarily have to, if you want to build a mobile application, then yes, you need to go through the app store process. If you're building an online browser mobile application that doesn't necessarily need to use uh, things like push notifications or things like uh, accelerometers and so on, then you can build a web application uh, which runs on the, uh, the mobile browser as well as the, the a tablet. But it's exactly the same model. You can uh, build exactly the same app for both online, offline, on a mobile, but also on the responsive web as well. Got it. So, uh Time just for, for a few more questions, so I'll, I'll give you a, a layup here. Uh, that's American for an easy question. Um, are there, <laughs> Thanks for the translation. <laughs> are there provisions for free training and certification on Mendix software? Yes, there are. So um, if you go to academy.mendix.com, uh, you can go through the free online training. So all of our introduction training is available online. Uh, after you've gone through that particular training, um, you can then take the Mendix uh, Beginners uh, um, Rapid Developer Certificate. Sorry. Uh, once you've got that certificate, you then become a, a rapid developer. And then we have further courses to take you on to be an advanced user as well, which is also online. So all the examinations, all of the training is free, available online, as well as the modeler and development tool I showed you earlier. You can download today and build unlimited applications for free and we host those for up to 10 users. Great, thank you. And then uh, the last question I have here that we're gonna be able to cover, uh, the question is, what type of integration do you have with the SAP Cloud Platform? Okay, so <laughs> this is uh, slightly different from the mobile questions, but uh, Mendex obviously is a, a solution extension uh, partner of SAP, which means we can uh, deploy onto the SAP Cloud Platform, 
and utilize any of the services that are belong to the SAP platform. So we can easily integrate into services such as ECC, um, we can integrate into S4, Success Factors, Concur, um, SAP Leonardo services from the blockchain, the IoT services, that sort of thing, uh, easily with the integrations. So some of these integrations are available on the Mendix App Store. But what we've also built with the partnership with SAP is that we've built the ability to generate any integration into any of the SAP system using our OData builder. So using any OData or REST service, we can automatically generate the necessary data structure and mapping to the Mendix application so that you can communicate with that particular server. And we also have a number of uh, services which are automatically set up when you connect and deploy on the SAP cloud platform, such as the connectivity services and the single sign-on services, so that you can, auto you can utilize those particular APIs and services that are within your organization without the need to have to configure and create certain connections into your SAP products. Awesome. Well, uh, we're, we're actually a little bit over a minute um, over time now, so uh, we'll wrap it up there. Just to reiterate, we will follow up for, with any questions that we weren't able to get to during this session. Uh, thanks, everybody, for attending. Simon, thank you for uh, presenting the demo for us. Thank you. Have a good one.